What up, everybody? We're going to break down the latest Giants news and rumors as we are just days away from Giants versus the Las Vegas Raiders. The Giants, though, they did sign two kickers, and we have an injury update on Graham Gano. Also, we have quotes from Brian Dable about Andrew Thomas and Evan Neal potentially playing this week. And we'll also go through the full injury report, and we'll tell you who is in and who is out. But if you want the Giants to beat the Raiders this week, subscribe to the channel. Sub for Giants, dubs, free Giants content every single day. Lock us in, hit that sub button. I would really appreciate it. The talk of the town around MetLife Stadium and the New York Giants practice facility is about kickers because Graham Gano missed two clutch kicks last week for the Giants as they ended up losing to the New York Jets. And now, like we talked about, Graham Gano is going to need surgery as soon as possible. He is going to head to injured reserve, which means he has to miss at minimum four games, and most likely he is going to be out the remainder of the season. This just makes absolutely no sense to me. We knew Graham Gano was hurt. We knew that is the reason why that he missed those kicks. The question is, why did he put off surgery for two weeks if he knew he was going to need it? Because he didn't get hurt any further. He was on the injury report back on October 18th. So he's been on the injury report for two games. And in those two games, he's missed three kicks. So he's been hurt for two weeks, and he's been unsuccessful for two weeks. Shoot, two weeks ago when we beat the Washington Commanders, he missed a kick, and he was on the injury report then. After that game, he should have had surgery and went to IR. And he said it before the Jets game. Following that Commanders game, I need surgery. So Brian Dable, what the hell are you doing, my man? We were such big fans of Brian Dable last year, week one, going for two to win the game. But since then, everything just kind of seems to have lost that kind of luster. The magic seems to be gone. How on earth can you trot out a kicker that is hurt and has been hurt for weeks and needed surgery for weeks and he missed a field goal two weeks ago. He missed two last week. It cost you the game, and it ultimately cost you the season. I just don't understand what the Giants have been doing with injuries this year. Andrew Thomas has not played since week one. Started to practice in week four. Since when have you needed nine weeks to come back from a hamstring injury? I just feel like the communication between Brian Dable and Giants fans is not fair on how these injuries are going about and if they are progressing so now we are where we are. The Giants, they've had to sign two kickers in the last couple of days because Gano went to IR. Let's break down the first one. The Giants are signing Randy Bullock to the practice squad. You might remember this face. This is the face of the person that pretty much got Brian Dable his first win in the National Football League last year, week one. Fat Randy, he missed a kick to win the game. And the Giants, they ended up going 1-0 and in a fairy tale season. He's bounced around the league a couple of years. The last two years with the Tennessee Titans, the two prior to that, the Cincinnati Bengals, and he is no stellar kicker by any stretch of the imagination, but he is a professional kicker, and he is healthy, which means he is going to be better than Graham Gano. Maybe this move should have came a week ago. Last year, though, with Tennessee, he knocked in 85% of his field goals. Tennessee the prior year, 83.9, then 80.8, and about 87% for Cincinnati. No strong leg for Bullock. We've seen him miss a couple of game winners in his career, dating back to Texas A&M, but at least he's healthy and hopefully he can make kicks. If he doesn't, you know what? The Giants, they signed another kicker. They said, let's have a kickoff this day at practice on Friday. The Giants are going to have a kicker battle between Randy Bullock and Cade York, who the New York Giants just signed off the practice squad of the Tennessee Titans. He was actually signed to the active roster, was Cade York, while as Bullock is on the practice squad. You might know who Cade York is. He was cut by the Browns prior to the season, but he was also a fourth round pick at LSU in the 2022 NFL Draft. If you haven't learned by now, Joe Shane, and I hope you never do it, do not draft kickers. They never, ever work out. You look at what Cade York did this preseason, which eventually led him to being cut by the Cleveland Browns. He was just 50%. Four made field goals, four missed field goals, and the longest kick he made in the preseason was 43 yards. But it wasn't just his performance in the preseason that had him released by the Browns. He wasn't good in his rookie season, making just 75% of his kicks and only 93.5% 
of his extra points. So right now, the Giants have two kickers on the roster that are really no good. I mean, let's be honest. If you're a free agent kicker in the month of November, there's probably a good reason for that. But if I had to say who I thought or think or will believe be the kicker this Sunday for the Giants, I think it's going to be Cade York. I think he's going to win the kicker battle on Friday. But also, just think about it like this. The Giants signed one kicker to the practice squad. They signed one kicker to the active roster. So I believe Cade York is the guy that's going to end up winning this kicker battle that is going on right now at Giants practice. Some wild numbers for some of the kickers that the Giants have signed. So I want you to type the number of the kicker that you want to be the guy this Sunday. Type 99 for Randy Bullock. Type 46 for Cade York. It's going to be a lot of fun this Sunday. I can feel it. We're going to break down the latest news that we have since uh, the Giants injury report has come out and since they have talked to the media Andrew Thomas has been out since week one with that hamstring injury. Pretty much popped his hamstring chasing down a Dallas Cowboys special team player following the block kick on the first drive of the game. We'll get to quotes on that in a second. But first, I got to tell you guys about our proud sponsor of today's video, Prize Picks. If you like playing fantasy sports and you want to play daily fantasy sports and win real money, go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Use the promo code CLNS and Prize Picks is going to match your initial deposit up to $100. It's daily fantasy sports made easy. NFL, NBA, MLB. Now the season's gone. It'll come back in a little bit. College football, college basketball coming up as well. All you do is you create a lineup of two to six players and you simply choose more or less on their projected stat line that Prize Picks offers. I'm rolling with a two player lineup for this Sunday slate of games. I'm going with more rushing attempts than 18 and a half. For Saquon Barkley. We'll take a look at his last couple of games and I'll tell you why I'm going with this, but I also think it's going to be a shootout between the Dolphins and the Chiefs. So I'm going with more on Patrick Mahomes passing yards. You can roll with my picks, you can fade my picks, or just make picks of your own. Just do it with the best daily fantasy sports app in the game. It's prize picks. Prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Promo code CLNS. That link and all the info will be clickable down in the comments and description of today's show. So Andrew Thomas was asked by the media, do you think you're going to play this Sunday? And he said, we'll see. This is the most I've done. This practice that we just had, talking on Friday. If it responds well being his hamstring, I think I'll have a good chance. And that is the most optimistic that Andrew Thomas has sounded since this entire process began about him playing on, on a Sunday for the New York Giants. Getting Andrew Thomas back on that left tackle position to block for the blind side of Daniel Jones, who's going to be back under center for the first time in three weeks, will be absolutely huge. He could potentially have his starting center, his potentially starting left tackle on Andrew Thomas, and it sounds like his starting right tackle, Evan Neal, may also make his return to action as he has missed the last two games with an ankle injury. Brian Dable was asked about Evan Neal as well as Andrew Thomas and if they will play this week. And he said, they've both making progress. They've both had good days this week. They are getting close. And if the Giants are able to get back Andrew Thomas and Evan Neal, I actually believe the starting offensive line would look like this. Andrew Thomas at left tackle, Justin Pugh, the veteran at left guard, the rookie John Michael Schmitz at center. And I think Mark Lewinsky is actually going to stay on the starting offensive line at that right guard spot with Ben Bredesen being the first interior offense alignment off the bench if there is an injury somewhere across those three positions with Evan Neal at the right tackle spot and Tyree Phillips as your backup swing tackle who started at right tackle the last two weeks because of that Neal injury. You might say Marshall White Glowinski over Bredesen. After a rocky start for Mr. Mark Glowinski, he's actually been pretty solid for the Giants. And I think they want more versatility with Bredesen who could play guard or center, and he can even maybe even potentially bounce out to tackle if they need him to be that. The reason, though, I think this is such a big week for Thomas and potentially Evan Neal to be back is because the Las Vegas Raiders have a bottom three rush defense in the National Football League. They're giving up 140.6 yards per game. That ranks 30th in the NFL. And we've seen the Giants become very committed to establishing some sort of ground attack and establishing some sort of presence in that area with Saquon Barkley coming back from injury. Look at the last three games he's been back since he came back from that high ankle sprain. The guy has 81 carries in three games to go along with 10 catches. That's 91 touches. The guy is almost averaging 30 
He is. He's averaging more than 30 touches a game through the last three contacts, uh, contests. Excuse me. Not quite four yards per carry, but he's averaging almost 100 yards on the ground per game. And he had that receiving touchdown against Washington just two weeks ago. So I want to ask you this question. This was in my prize picks lineup. I went with more on 18.5 rushing attempts for Barkley this week versus the Raiders. What do you think? More or less? Type M for more. Type L for less. And if you think it's going to be more, put it in your lineup. Prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Let's close out the show just breaking down the injury report for the New York Giants. Graham Gano is obviously going to be out with that knee injury, and he will be headed to injured reserve. Tyrod Taylor dealing with a rib injury. He's not going to play. And Darren Waller thought this game would have a whole lot of juice with him potentially facing his ex-team, the Raiders. But once again, he's going to miss time in an NFL season with a hamstring injury like he did in multiple games the prior two seasons. With Darren Waller out, it's next man up. And that's going to be Daniel Bellinger, former mid-round pick from the 2022 NFL Draft at San Diego State. He looked really good in his rookie year. And there was a lot of hope and a lot of praise that he could potentially be that starting tight end. They go out and make a trade for Waller. Nobody mad about that. But I am excited to see if Daniel Bellinger could potentially be the guy that could step up and fill a little bit of that production that Waller is leaving behind, considering he leads the team in receiving uh, catches, yards, and tied for touchdowns. But the Giants only have one healthy tight end on their roster. It's Bellinger. The other one was Darren Waller. He's out, so maybe they're going to call up Lawrence Cager from their practice squad. I don't think you could play a football game in 2023 with just one tight end, so I am expecting at least one move, if that is Cager, to be called up to the, uh, to the, to the game roster, to the active roster for the game. So I think it could be Cager. I think it could be Ballinger. They may even sign another tight end just in case there is an emergency spot for that. People that are going to be questionable versus the Las Vegas Raiders, Jay Sean Corbin, who was signed just a couple of days ago with Eric Gray and Gary Brightwell on injured reserve. I guess that was last week now for Corbin. Evan Neal and Andrew Thomas also, they're going to be questionable. I think there's a good chance all three of these guys could play. And whether Corbin plays or not, the Giants are thin at that running back position. We mentioned Gray, and we mentioned Brightwell going to injured reserve. So the only really healthy guys you have are Barkley, Breida, and Deion Jackson, who you signed from the Colts last week. Giants are thin. They're beat up pretty much everywhere across this entire football team. But I am expecting a big day for number 26 this week against the Las Vegas Raiders. Speaking of the Raiders, I just want to close the, close the show with this question. Who do you got winning the game this Sunday? Can the Giants get back in the win column? Because I could really use a victory Monday. Let me know who you got. LV for the Raiders or NYG for the Giants. As always, you can also give me a follow over on Twitter. The handle's right here, at Marshall Green underscore. I'm tweeting about Big Blue all day, every day. And I want to follow some of you guys back. So give me a follow and DM me, F the Raiders, and I'll give you a follow back.